Hope you enjoy the wheel spins on. Harry stood outside the rookery holding a strange letter he'd received the day before inviting him to visit Luna. She had written that her father had decided to leave Britain for a while to re-establish himself abroad until he could look at his daughter without collapsing. She had written that he felt terrible about his actions during her captivity and would one day apologize in person but for now the war had taken a toll on the man. Harry raised his hand to knock on the bright cyan door, but just as he went to knock, it opened to reveal Luna in a paint splatter jumpsuit. Harry. Oh it's such a joy to see you. She exclaimed, radish earrings swaying. You're just in time for dinner. He shifted and followed her into the house, looking much brighter than the last time he'd been there. Now instead of newspaper articles and forgotten cups of tea, there sat an easel with a half-done painting of what looked like small fairies in blues and greens. There were books scattered over all the flat surfaces and that surprised Harry. He knew logically Luna was a Ravenclaw and might like reading but had never seen proof of it and had assumed maybe she was different from the needs of Ravenclaw. He reached the dining room table and saw what Luna had cooked, American-style burgers made out of beans with beetroot slaw and fixings and an entire container of green olives. Complete with a pitcher of water. He blinked. He hadn't expected that combination. But he sat down just the same. Luna came rushing back into the room with cloth napkins and a basket full of what looked like homemade buns. For the burgers. She said answering a question Harry didn't know he wanted to ask. Finally they sat and tucked in, Harry's eyebrows rising in surprise at how good everything was. Luna wiped her mouth and looked at Harry, her slightly bulbous eyes catching his and focusing him on her. I'd like to know if you'd like to stay with me, here. It gets quite lonely without daddy and I think you are lonely too. The offer is for as long as we need each other's company but I don't mind if you'd rather not. Harry was stunned. He wiped his mouth and hand where some ketchup had spilled on him. Luna, I'd actually love to stay with you if you're fine with it. Hermione keeps pressuring me to go back to Hogwarts and Ron keeps talking about the Aurors and I just want some time to find out who I am without the pressure to be the chosen one or whatever batshit. Title The Prophets Giving Me They grew up with an idea of what they would do after school and I never really got that. So yes Luna I would love to stay with you. She smiled widely and clapped her hands. All right now that that's settled, do you want some pistachio pudding? Triple X Harry moved in slowly over the next week, trying to avoid drawing attention from his friends. Luna advised him to tell them before too much longer but Harry was resistant. He didn't like fighting with his friends and knew that they wouldn't understand what he was doing. Finally he said if she was with him he'd tell everybody. So on the next Weasley family Sunday dinner, Harry collected Luna as his date for the night and they walked over the hill to the burrow. If anyone was surprised to see Luna, they hid it well. As everyone was finishing their apple crisp, Harry cleared his throat and stood. So. I know last year was pretty crazy and Hogwarts is offering make-up years for last year's seventh years and you all know the Aurors have offered me a place even without newts. But I am um, I'm thinking of taking a year to myself. Gringotts assured me that even after paying reparations, I have enough to never have to work so I thought I'd find out what I want to do for the next several years. I mean... I've never even gotten to know what other jobs exist in the wizarding world. And Luna has offered me a place at the rookery since she's doing her newts as homeschool. He sat back down and fiddled with his napkin. Nobody spoke for a moment and then another moment. Mrs. Weasley finally spoke up. Harry dear, what about your future prospects? If you don't have credentials. 
Mrs. Weasley, even if I had my newts there's no guarantee I'd get a good job. But I've talked to Gringotts and they seem to think I have enough funds for a gap year or longer if I wanted. This is my choice. I need to recover from the war. And I can't do it at Hogwarts and I can't do it in the Aurors. Ron looked conflicted, like he wanted to run or yell but held himself in his chair. Harry sighed and pushed back from the table. Maybe it's best if I go. Luna grabbed his hand and stood beside him. They thanked the Weasleys and slipped out the kitchen door, heading back to the rookery. Triple X Harry moved into the spare room at the rookery the week before the express left for Hogwarts and immediately noticed he felt calmer. Like a pressure had been lifted. He and Luna established a chore sheet soon after he moved in to keep things from piling on top of one person and because Harry was incredibly good at house chores. He should be, he'd only done them since he was five. They wrote down that they would rotate cooking and would clean together every other day. And so they got settled in. Luna showed him around the property, noting that the garden would need to be harvested and the dirigible plums picked and Jared. Harry volunteered to help despite not knowing much about preserving food. Luna just smiled and said they'd get through it together. She showed him the stream that ran through the yard and asked if he liked fishing. He had tried rustic fishing during the last year on the run, just summoning fish OT of the water, and he said he didn't mind fish so long as they could add seasoning. Luna smiled and said gulping plimpies were quite tasty in a curry sauce if he ever wanted to try. They settled back at the house and Luna put a record on an ancient gramophone. Soon sounds of an eclectic jazz number filled the house. Harry looked interested so Luna informed him it was a record of Ethiopian jazz her mother had picked up in her travels as a spellcrafter. As one can't be expected to find something new if they don't know what already exists. Harry moved to look at the rest of Luna's record collection. It was mostly foreign artists, from Africa to bands in Spanish to American brass bands but all a mix of muggle and magic, he smiled. He had never gotten to experience music much before but he was excited to see what he liked. So far he liked jazz. While he had been looking at the records, Luna had curled up with a sketchbook on a chaise lounge and was drawing something. He moved to peek over her shoulder and saw abstract lines that made no sense to him but he wasn't the most knowledgeable about art either. He decided he was going to read and walked over to the overflowing bookcase and selected a thinner book. It turned out to be a poetry book. A day for new experiences all around. Triple X Luna and Harry settled into a rhythm as the days passed. On the first they saw off their friends and spent the day in London. On the second, they rose early and went into the orchard to harvest plums. Luna would climb the apple ladder, a spindly three-footed wooden ladder, and would toss the plum down to Harry, who with his seeker reflexes caught most of them. By eleven, they had gotten most of them and decided to leave the rest for animals. After three trips of both of them carrying full baskets, they washed and chopped the plums for canning into jams. By the time the jars were filled and cooking in a water bath to seal themselves, both teenagers were covered in plum juice. They smiled at each other and decided to shower quickly while the jars were cooking. After they were clean, Harry used the leftover plums to make a crumble for dinner and they worked on cleaning the kitchen, marveling at how many jars of jam they now had. While Harry was baking, Luna wandered out to the garden and picked some courgettes and auberginess for dinner. They sat around the kitchen table and drank some herbal tea and ate their crumble in an enjoyable silence. Ron and Hermione had never understood the benefits of silence. 
Ron couldn't sit quietly and Hermione was always bursting to share thoughts and ideas. But Harry who had grown up with long periods of no one talking to him or speaking at all craved silence sometimes. Luna didn't feel the need to fill the air with unnecessary talk. She merely ate her dessert and sipped her tea, staring into the air. Triple X Over the past month, Harry had learned many things about Luna. She was a pescatarian, but only ate fish occasionally. She liked to paint murals, changing the mural in her room as inspiration struck. She was an early riser. She liked to wake with the sun, sometimes before even, and often wandered the fields outside in the cool dew spread dawn. She liked music that wasn't in English, claiming it was cultural bonding to experience music from the artist's perspective. And she made amazing casseroles. Harry was sure she was learning things about him but had no clue as to what. He found he was enjoying his time at the rookery though. It was peaceful. Something his life had sorely been missing. He was learning things about himself as well. He liked lavender scented sheets, scented with a spray Luna made herself. He liked reading, finding muggle fiction on the shelves as well as serious tomes about all sorts of studies, helpful considering he was tempted to join Luna at the ministry for newts in the spring. He liked having company while he cooked. And he found he liked working outside. This surprised him as he'd never particularly liked maintaining the flower beds and perfect grass at Privet Drive. But eating vegetables he had tended himself was a great change of pace. Near the end of the month, Luna had approached him and asked if he would like to participate in a magical ritual her family did. Luna called it Mavin and said it was a pagan holy day for celebrating the end of summer, the beginning of autumn and the harvest season. It was simple to celebrate. They baked bread together and at sunset they offered a smaller loaf they had made and apples picked from the orchard and left them outside for spirits and nature to set a simple invocation to the spirits to thank them for a splendid harvest. Inside, they ate a simple supper of acorn squash and bread with butter. As Harry went to bed, he felt a softness inside him that he'd never felt before, a lightness. Triple X The air grew colder and the days shorter and the teenagers tidied the garden to sleep until spring and Harry decided to try his hand at chopping wood. Luna assured him she knew the spells to chop and transport wood, but he wanted to try it at least partially the muggle way. So they found an axe and went into the nearby woods. Harry used his wand to slice rounds from a couple dead trees and set to work with his axe. He made good progress getting an entire tree length of rounds chopped and decided to spread the work out over the next few weeks. Luna helped him float the chopped wood back to the house and the stacked it neatly under an overhanging specific for that purpose. In addition to his lumberjack endeavors, Harry had taken up walks. He would get up early and pack a lunch of apples and hard cheese and just walk around the wilderness. Sometimes Luna would go with him and they would sit in the fields and watch birds, sometimes they spotted deer and Harry would get emotional. It was as if his parents were giving him a sign from beyond the veil, that they supported him. On Halloween, or Samhain as Luna called it, Harry awoke with a fog in his head. He went for his walk and saw a family of deer and Luna held his hand as he explained about the marauders and his mum and even Snape. She pulled him back to the house and fixed him a cup of hot chocolate before pulling out a photo album labeled 1980-81. It featured baby pictures of Luna. And to his surprise his parents and himself. Luna smiled. It helps to look back and remember how much we are loved even though they're gone. He smiled back and they spent the rest of the evening looking at photos and reminiscing about lost loved ones. Little by little, 
Harry felt his heart being fixed. Triple X Winter came with a bang, otherwise known as a big snowstorm. The wood Harry had chopped was put to use keeping the house warm and toasty as they made soups and baked bread. Luna explained that Yule was coming up. So in the spirit of the holiday, they made popcorn chains and strung slices of dried orange and strung them all around the house and on the trees outside for wildlife to enjoy. Luna insisted that cutting a living tree was cruel so they made a paper tree instead and decorated it with notes saying what they wished to bring into the new year. Harry had previously only celebrated Christmas but this was the start of something new and he found he liked it. Yule finally came and they lit a large cherry log for the Yule log, both for the personal meaning as a tree of rebirth, something that both teens felt appropriate, and the smell of the wood. They stayed up all night drinking mulled cider and in the morning watched the sun rise. After that, Molly had invited them for dinner and they wanted to see their friends after a semester away at Hoglitz. So they bundled up and hiked over the hills to the burrow. Ron, Hermione, and Ginny looked glad to see them and asked what they had been doing, curious about life outside school. Ron seemed keen on the jam but not the work that went into it and audibly groaned at the idea of chopping wood without magic. Ginny leered at him, telling him she appreciated his lumberjack efforts which just made him uncomfortable. He and Ginny had been happy once but after all they had experienced through the war, he just didn't think they'd be happy together. Ginny noticed his face and took Luna off to catch up. Hermione was quiet, but reached over and gave him a one-armed hug. I'm glad for you Harry. You look like you're healing. From everything. Mrs. Weasley sat in her chair, looking forlorn at her children, but seemed to shake it off and aimed a comforting smile at Harry when she noticed him looking her way. He smiled softly. You know, I think I am. Triple X. The new year came and went and as December turned into January, Harry and Luna decided to study. Harry wasn't convinced he needed newts but wanted to try. As one would expect from a Ravenclaw, Luna had several books on every subject the ministry offered exams in. Harry decided he would try for charms, transfiguration, and defense. He decided at the last minute to add potions as he had enjoyed it under Professor Slughorn and with the help of Snape's notes. Luna was studying for charms, defense potions, history, care of magical creatures, astronomy, and runes. As it was too cold now to go for his nature walks, Harry turned his focus to practicing for exams. He and Luna would go to the garden and practice spells until they were cold, then come in for a hot drink and lunch before moving to the living room to study theory. On weekends, they cleaned up the kitchen and practiced potions. Harry was getting better at draft of peace and would walk to the burrow to give some to Mrs. Weasley for George. He was still suffering from the loss of his twin but could be counted on to sit and watch his mum cook. He would catch up with George and Mrs. Weasley for a bit before heading back to the rookery for more studying. As January ended, Luna told him of the next holiday she practiced. Imbolc on the 1st of February, a day of light and renewal. When the day came they lit candles and planted seeds in the house to sit and germinate before they could be planted in the spring. Luna also insisted on having dumplings and kalkanen for dinner as traditional Celtic foods. Triple X Slowly the days got longer and the ground started to wake. Harry started his walks again, noticing the birds he saw. He and Luna were fairly good at all the spells they would need to know so they focused on theory with breaks of pleasure reading to balance their thoughts. He decided to pick up wood building as a hobby and was working on a birdhouse in his free time. Luna had already volunteered to paint it when it was finished. 
he was also looking into beekeeping but didn't want to start that until he was settled somewhere. He was happy at the rookery but knew he couldn't stay forever. For the spring equinox, they painted eggs and sang songs. They woke at dawn to stand barefoot in the grass and welcome the start of spring. Harry might have been new to the pagan calendar but he found he was enjoying these new holidays and ways to celebrate. Triple X Exams were approaching and Harry realized he had never asked Luna when her birthday was. She answered, December 21. His jaw dropped. You mean when we celebrated Yule, we could have been celebrating you? That's awful, Luna. I feel just awful. And so Harry got Luna to agree to a small birthday picnic. He made a curried chickpea salad, some egg and cress sandwiches and sliced some fruit. He also made her favorite dessert, lemon curd tarts. He found a good size basket and filled it with picnic supplies and conjured a soft durable blanket and they set out to find the best spot for lunch. They settled on a spot near the orchard where lots of wildflowers were growing. After they ate, Luna laid on her back and wove flowers into crowns for each of them. She smiled and told him that today was Beltane and what a wonderful way to celebrate the opening of spring. She told him some more on the holiday and they decided a bonfire would be nice, or at least a campfire. Harry operat to London and picked up some specialty foods Ottery St. Catchpole just didn't have, like soy hot dogs and tofu as well as a small charcoal grill. He got back and found Luna sitting on the patio watching birds come to the birdhouse he had finished last month. He smiled at her and headed in to prepare dinner. He thought a camping dinner would be nice. Grilled hot dogs and steamed tofu with spices. He went back out on the patio to set up the grill. Instead of charcoal he used his wand to light some small pieces of wood kindling. Once it was burning, he closed the cover and left it to get hot. He sliced the tofu and covered it in a blend of turmeric, curry powder, cumin, and pepper before wrapping it in tin foil and setting the package aside. He opened the soy dogs and set the package beside the tofu. He also made a quick coleslaw out of one of the remaining cabbages and some older carrots. He carried the proteins out and set them to cooking and came back to dress the slaw. Then, as a split-second decision he got out some pickled vegetables and hard cheeses. When everything was done and smelling sweetly of the spices, he and Luna piled up plates and ate outside on the patio. They decided they still needed a fire so they found some big stones with an oxio and gathered some leftover firewood before starting a small campfire. Then, Luna suggested they write down things they wanted to change in their lives. Harry looked at Luna and wrote down what he had been feeling for a while. He hoped he could stay in the moment forever, full of good food and cheer, with a beautiful girl, hair, and cheeks glowing in the firelight. With a deep breath, he cast his wish into the fire. Triple X Exams came with a string of summer storms. Each day for two weeks they operat to the ministry to take their exams and each day picked up a meal in town or went to the borough, both too tired to cook. At the end of the two weeks, they found that June was ending and summer was here. Luna asked Harry what he wanted to do to celebrate and after some thought he said he might like a walking holiday or a trip somewhere. He had the funds after all. Luna said she'd give it some thought and by the end of the week brought up the idea of hiking along the Northumberland National Park. Harry looked it up on a map and agreed, but was hesitant at the idea of camping. Luna assured him they could do most of the hikes during the day and rent a cabin nearby. So they agreed. Before they went, Harry convinced Luna they should know how to ride bikes for passing as muggles. He had missed out on the experience as a child with Dudley, 
but that didn't mean he couldn't learn now. Luna was excited. She had seen bikes in town but her father hadn't known where to buy one for her. So they bought bikes and helmets, as Harry was aware falling could hurt, and set to practicing on the hills and on the road into town. They picked it up fast and were only slightly wobbly by the end of day two so they packed up and called one of the cabin rental companies in the area to reserve a cabin for a week. While Harry was at the phone box he also asked the rental company if they knew of a place that rented bicycles. He knew that Northumberland was several kilometers away from Devon, but they were definitely taking the train and bikes were not as travel ready as a backpack. Renting would be the way to go. Finally the start day of their trip, they operate to London, figuring King's Cross would be a good starting location. They bought their tickets and settled in for a three-hour trip. Harry had packed snacks and books, and warned Luna it was not quite the same as the Hogwarts Express. She just smiled and looked out the window. They played several games of cards, Luna amazingly entertained by muggle card game rules. And at one point Harry had dozed off. But three hours later, they arrived. Harry directed Luna to the bike shop the lady on the phone had told him about and they rented two all-purpose bikes for the week. After that they got some dinner in the local pub and took their bikes to the cabin, glad for the late sunset of summertime. They got to the cabin and both blushed when they realized the rental company had booked them a one-bed cabin. Harry looked at Luna. Luna looked at Harry. And they burst into laughter. Luna assured Harry she was fine sharing the bed. That after all the time they had spent together how could she not be comfortable with him. So that was decided. They got ready for bed. Harry blushing all the while, and with some whispers and adjustments fell into a peaceful sleep. Harry woke up the next day, wondering how he had gotten such a restorative sleep, and found he was spooning Luna. He wanted to jump back at how inappropriate it was, they were friends and that's all. But Luna had one of his hands gripped tightly, as if it were a child's teddy bear, so Harry gave up and leaned back on his elbow and watched the micro-expressions on Luna's face. She had a small silvered scar on her chin and he wondered what had caused it. Soon, Luna awoke with a stretch, and looked over her shoulder at Harry and smiled a good morning. He stammered good morning back and tried not to look at her chest through her thin summer nightgown. She laughed at him and shimmied to draw even more attention, making him blush bright red. After that they got dressed in mugglish clothing and made a quick breakfast before setting out on one of the many trails the park offered. They biked for several hours, taking their time through the trails, Luna snapping photos with one of the many cameras her dad had left behind. She even snapped some of Harry and one or two of the both of them when she could convince a muggle to take their picture. After all, the magic was in the development of the film, not the camera itself. The week was coming to an end and it was Midsummer's Eve as well as the hottest day of the summer so far. So Luna proposed that they take the bikes to one of the swimming holes in the park, Linhope Spout, and go for a swim and lunch at the waterfall. Harry thought cold water on a hot day sounded divine and agreed. They got to the swimming hole and Harry had to stop as he remembered he wasn't a good swimmer. Aunt Petunia had been forced to allow him to learn with the rest of his class, but Dudley had thought it great fun to dunk him so he had only learned the basics. But Luna grabbed his hand and looked at him with confidence. They stripped down to bathing suits and waded in. The cool water was so relaxing. They floated around and chased each other in the pool making sure to stay away from the waterfall's powerful wake. After they were tired of swimming, Luna insisted they lay in a sunny spot and soak up the sun's power and energy. They went back to the cabin that evening, 
full of relaxing energy. Their week came to an end, and Harry noticed that Luna was being more touchy with him, small brushes of her hand or taking him by the hand and leading him places. He found he liked it and tried to do the same. He knew it would make it harder when she told him to leave, but for now he was enjoying her company. Triple X June ended and July passed and soon the Hogwarts crew was back. So Harry resigned himself to visiting the borough more often. He had been stopping in infrequently to visit George, who was now back in Diagon Alley at the shop trying to make a go of things, and to swap recipes with Mrs. Weasley. But it was different seeing Ron, Hermione, and Ginny again. And it was kind of strange to him that they were all adults now. Luna didn't like Mrs. Weasley's opinions, like that the two of them shouldn't be living together with no chaperone, so Harry was on his own. At first, it was nice, flying with Ron and Ginny, and showing off his newfound plant and wildlife knowledge to Hermione, but over time he found the relationships weren't as strong. Was leaving Hogwarts all it took to unravel his friendships? He still thought of the Weasleys as family but the connection definitely had changed over the last year. On the 30th, he sent a birthday note to Neville. He also received an owl from the ministry, nude results. He turned and found Luna coming in the kitchen door with an envelope of her own. They grinned at each other and opened them at the same time, Harry's eyes skimming the parchment. Harry J. Potter Nastily exhausting wizarding test results. Charms O. Transfiguration E. Defense O. Potions E. Congratulations Mr. Potter on these achievements. Signed. Department of Magical Education. He smiled. He had passed. Harry looked over to Luna to see her smiling widely. So. All O's. Oh my mum would be so proud. She sniffed, getting a little teary before scrubbing her eyes and smiling brightly. We should celebrate. I think this calls for lemon tarts. He laughed and nodded. I think our scores definitely entitle us to some tarts. I'll get started. While the tarts were cooking, Harry heard knocking, and looked over to see Hermione standing there with parchment in hand and Ron leaning beside her. He let them in, ignoring their glances at everything, and asked about them. Hermione beamed and said that out of the ten classes she had taken she got O's in most except transfiguration and care where she had gotten E's. He smiled and gave her a side hug. I'm so proud of you. I knew you were brilliant but wow. Ron shuffled his feet. That's not all. Mum wanted me to tell you she's planning a birthday party for you tomorrow. Round two I think. Luna's invited too. Harry blinked. He hadn't been expecting a birthday party. More a quiet day with Luna, maybe starting on building a second wood overhang, but maybe it would be fun. He nodded, sure sounds nice. Ron shifted. All right well, see you tomorrow mate. And they left as quick as they'd come. The teen shrugged and checked on the tart, deciding to tell Luna over dinner. Luna was not happy but for Harry's sake agreed to go for a little while. If she didn't like it she could leave and they'd do something fun just the two of them on the first. So as the afternoon approached, they started the walk to the burrow. Mrs. Weasley greeted them with a hug and ushered them right back outside. They sat in the grass and talked until the next guests showed up. Bill and Fleur operated in with a small infant in Fleur's arms. They all looked at the baby, smiling at new life being brought into the world. 
Andromeda and Teddy came by next, Teddy showed off that he was learning to walk. He could do a few steps by himself but did much more holding onto furniture or a hand. He could also babble and decided he wanted to stay with Luna, hair morphing to match her dirty blonde hair with the little hair he had. He also decided that Patty Cake was his absolute favorite and insisted that the nearest adult play with him repeatedly. Finally George arrived and Mrs. Weasley began serving lunch. As typical, she forgot that Luna didn't eat meat. They shared a glance. Harry shifted some of the heavier meat-based options towards Ron and loaded his plate with sides. After living with Luna for most of a year, he found he enjoyed eating the way she did and didn't miss meat. Harry and Luna, used to eating together, shared tasty bites with each other, not noticing the glances they were getting. Mrs. Weasley cleared her throat and rushed to bring out a large chocolate cake. Harry smiled at her and thanked the matron. They lit the candles and sang. He blew them out with a wish in mind and glanced at Luna. She smiled back at him. The group was in the living room eating their cake when Hermione cleared her throat and asked, Harry, how long have you and Luna been dating? His eyes got big and he started to stammer. Luna put a hand on his arm, oh it's been a while now. That shut everyone up but Harry looked at her with wide eyes. After that the teenagers thanked everyone, gave hugs all around and promised Andromeda to come by more to see Teddy and be a part of his life. As they were walking back across the field, Luna snagged Harry's hand in her own. They got back to the house and it was blue with the fading light, he turned to her and asked outright, Luna, are we dating? Of course, I thought you knew. She answered in her dreamy tone. He stared at her, no, Luna, how would I know that? Oh, well now you know. She leaned up and kissed the corner of his mouth. What a birthday it had been. Triple X. The next day was Lughnasset and Luna assured him he'd like it. It was a holiday devoted to grains and fruit. They woke early and had a hearty oatmeal for breakfast with berries and nuts before operating to London. Then, Luna revealed her itinerary. They were going to the Natural History Museum. After that they stopped in a cafe and had croissants with jam and coffee. Next Luna took him on a double-decker bus tour. She blushed when he looked at her in amazement and admitted she had asked Hermione for help. He beamed at her and thanked her. With his childhood, he had missed the typical tourist experiences. They both enjoyed the tour and had even seen some ghosts at the Tower of London, unnoticed by the multitudes of muggles. They finished their day with fish and chips at a place near Diagon Alley. Harry pulled the blonde clothes and pressed a kiss to her head. Thank you Luna for a great day. Triple X As fall came around again, Harry reflected that he'd been staying at the rookery for a year and he felt better than he had in a long time. He and Luna had discussed the war and how it affected their childhoods. Harry had also, encouraged by Luna, discussed his own childhood before Hogwarts and managed to make peace with it. He had even sent Dudley a birthday card with a note saying they were good, but he never wanted to see his aunt and uncle ever again. Dudley had managed to send a note back, saying he understood and hoped they could stay in contact even if it meant birds delivering mail. He sat in the garden, ruminating over the past year. He definitely felt different compared to before. The dark-haired teen had grown healthier, fed by Luna's vegetable-filled eating. He found he didn't miss meat as much as he thought he would. Ron would never be happy with eating that way but that was okay. He had grown stronger, driven by his daily walks and dealing with the woodpile. 
there was some muscle on him now. He'd never have George's beater physique but he looked better than the scrawny scrap he'd been in the past. His thoughts turned to Luna as his eyes watched her pick tomatoes for dinner. He knew it hadn't been long that he'd known her, really known her, but he wanted to stay in this idle life for as long as possible. Over dinner, he played with his fork before clearing his throat and speaking. Luna, can I ask you something? Of course, Harry. Would would you be alright if I were to move in permanently? Of course. I thought that's what we were doing already. I didn't want to assume. This is still your place and we just never said it out loud. She smiled gently and reached across the table to hold his hand. Harry, I want you in my life as long as you want to stay. You are precious to me and I deeply enjoy your company. If we stay together a hundred years or even just one it means a lot to me. He absorbed what she was telling him and smiled. That sounds wonderful. You're precious to me too. Hope you enjoyed please like and subscribe.